did you get into photographing cars? Did you start out just with a like of love of photography or was it the cars come first? I'd have to say the cars came first. I can uh, I can get my parents on the phone if you want. My very first word was car. Growing up, you, you already had a love of cars. Right, cars and planes. I, I was completely obsessed from being a, a little kid, but I was also always artistic. So I was always drawing, painting, things like that. And and uh, and actually my minor in college is art. So it, uh, it kind of transitioned into photography in my early 20s. And I've just been obsessed with it ever since. So when you started out with the photography, what was the first thing? Did you immediately go to cars as a subject matter? I didn't know. I started when I was in the Air Force. So uh, traveling all the time, I would kind of shoot whatever setting I was in. If I was in, you know, Texas, it would be landscape, things like that. If I was in Afghanistan, landscape, helicopters, things like that. And then once I got out, I really, really started getting into cars. Well, since you mentioned it, I have to admit that to me, some of the most impressive pictures that I've seen of yours are the pictures that are taken air to air of other aircraft. Yeah. And that's gotta be, I mean, tell me a little bit about that. That's gotta be exciting. That's a fun thing to do. Actually, last fall, I got to do um, a ride in a Stearman photographing a, an old school Barnstormer airplane wingtip to wingtip. And that was just, that was incredible. That was a really, really cool experience. And I've noticed too, that a lot of your car photography, you mix in the aviation with the cars. Right. So, and it, it really works well together. Mixing both of my obsessions. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. We see that you, photograph a lot of fairly exotic cars. Right. What is your favorite kind of car? I would have to say it's definitely the exotic cars. The ones that are, I think something like this, like the Pagani Wire, that's the ultimate expression of what a car can be. Nobody needs, you know, something like that, but it's, you know. It's, I would like to differ with you on that and say that I need that. Well, I need that too. But, you know, every time I look at that car, I notice something new about it. You know, there's just so much detail and in those especially so much attention to detail. Yeah, it's an incredible piece of art. Exactly, it is a piece of art. You yeah. know, you can either look at a, a watercolor, you know, the, the kid painted, or you can look at it, you know, something from Da Vinci. You know, Da Vinci's the ultimate expression of art and I think those are similar. Well, if we're talking about cars then, if you could say only have one car, that's it. It's any car on earth, but you can only have one. <laughs> it's a tough, it's a tough question. I've, I've pondered it myself. Uh, what would it be? Carrera GT. Carrera GT? Yep. Porsche okay. Carrera GT. What are you going to do when it's uh, bad weather? Put the you going to drive that in the snow? <laughs> Put the top <laughs> I was in Houston with some friends. This is right when Carrera GT came out and I was walking up to the Porsche store and the sun was hitting it just right. The, the glass was mirrored. So you could see us walking up in a mirrored reflection. And as we got closer to the door, my outline against the door cast a shadow through it and I could see the nose of a black Carrera GT. It's the very first one I'd ever seen in the metal and my heart skipped a beat. <gasps> they have one. You know, it, it blew my mind. Just I just sat there and walked around it a dozen times, just drinking it in. And no car's ever done that to me where it just, you know, made my Well, it makes stop. sense. I mean, it's a beautiful car. It is. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the prettiest car. Well, what if I were what if I were to make it easier on you? What if I said, okay, I'll give you I'll give you a garage. I'll give you a five car garage. You can put five cars in it. What are they? Huracan Performante, Carrera GT, probably a 911 Turbo S. That's the best all around everyday car. Audi R8 V10 Plus. Like yeah. the one we're looking at today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And probably a truck of some kind. Just a haul things, maybe a F-250. I don't know, I'm not really into trucks at all. Yeah, uh, an F-250 is very practical. You can tow stuff with a Cayenne, all right, Cayenne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're a kid, uh, you're into cars. What was your first car? What's the first car you ever owned? Very first car was a Guards Red Porsche 944. So you started off right out yeah. front with a Porsche? Yeah. Now, was that the first car you ever drove? That was the very first car I bought. Yeah. With a co-sign loan. <laughs> right, my yeah. parents, you know, it had six and a half trillion miles on it. <laughs> you know, it was not in the best of shape, but it was a red Porsche and I loved that thing. Yeah. It's a five speed. It was not fast. It, you know, for the day, it was an impressive little piece of machinery. Yeah, it was, it was really slow. Yeah. But man, I loved that thing. I wish I still had it. Are there others that you've owned that you wish you had kept hold of? Actually, I have not had many cars. Uh, really? My current car, I've got a, uh, a C5 Corvette. It's a 99. I bought that in 2007 as a welcome home from Iraq present to myself. And I've had that ever since. It's still in my garage now. So that thing's been to Germany, France, Italy, Austria, Czech Republic. Been on the Autobahn. Got 180 miles an hour on the Autobahn. And so it's a well-traveled machine. It's got 130,000 miles on it, yeah. Wow, It's yeah. not a garage princess. Is that the fastest you've ever driven? It is, yeah. Yeah. 186 to be exact. Wow, yeah. Well, that's that's plenty fast indicator, on a... I don't know if it was actually going that fast, but that's what it was in. The indicator, yeah. yeah. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's official. Yeah. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but I mean, I get to drive these things, so, you know, relatively speaking, it's slow, but... The, the Corvette's a really nice car, and, when, you know, I've seen some great footage that you've taken up, some great photographs. Thanks. So, let, let, let's talk about, uh, back to photography. Uh, like today, uh, we're photographing that Miami Blue Audi R8. It's a beautiful car. Right. I watched you 
uh, shoot around the car. There's a lot of work that goes into it. I don't think people understand how much work goes into it. Do you do, you do a lot of preparation and thinking about what you're gonna photograph or are you at a point where it's just sort of second nature? You know, I um, nine times out of 10, I go into a shoot having every shot in my head, exactly what I'm gonna get. I know what conditions I'm gonna have. I know what gear I'm gonna have and I know roughly what the car, what kind of shape the car is gonna be in. So I kind of have a set shot list in my mind. You know, I've got 10 shots, I'm gonna get these. If I get something different, something changes like the jet that showed up today. You know, that came up out of nowhere. And, you know, we just rolled with punches and some of the best shots we got today were with that jet. So I have set stuff like detailed shots, like wheels, you know, close-ups of certain parts of the car, depending on what it is. You know, if I'm shooting a, uh, a Ferrari 458, you know, the, the tri-tip exhaust, you know, it's one of those things like I gotta get a shot of that, a close-up of that, you know, things like that. So it depends on the car. But yeah, I usually have a shot list in my mind before I even open my camera bag. It sounds like you don't necessarily have a favorite sort of detail to focus on on a car. It depends on the car. That's what really I find a challenge in car photography is trying to find something unique about every shot, you know, rather than posting the same thing every single day or, you know, the same style of shot every single day, like making it fresh, making it different. After you take the photograph, do you generally capture what you need in camera or are you spending a lot of time in post-production, I guess we would call it? With... That's a good question. Yeah. I try to get as much as I can in camera, not just because that speeds up the workflow on the back end, but because I think that just makes it a truer image. Right. You know, I see a lot of people that do a whole lot of Photoshop. You know, it's immediately recognizable to somebody like me. And I'm not a huge fan of that. I like to do as much as I can on the front end to make the image more genuine. One thing we, we saw you do today when we were shooting inside, and I guess what we would call studio conditions, mm -hmm. um, you were doing a little bit uh, of what you're calling a light painting. Right. And I'm assuming that requires quite a bit of post-production. Um, yes. And so what got you interested in doing that? It, it seems like it's a very artistic sort of thing. It is. It is very cool. The, the results are very neat, and but it's very different. It's more artistic than I would say what you would say see in um, you know Car and Driver magazine. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it, there's a lot of work that goes into those on the back end. It's a whole lot of time in Photoshop, but it gives you ultimate control when you're shooting outside. You're kind of at the at the whims of the sun and the clouds you know, or the shadow if you're using that. In the studio using light painting, you have ultimate control over everything. Completely lights out, you know, using a four to six second exposure with the, the light going back and forth. You know, it gives you a chance to really spend a lot of time focusing on certain parts of the car and then just meshing them all together in different layers. Do you enjoy taking pictures of the car in a static form where it's sitting, parked, or do you like to get out and get the car in a, you know, something kinetic where you're driving the car and getting shots that are more in motion? I tell you what, I love action. Probably my favorite car shoot ever was at the Daytona 24 hour race, the Rolex 24. And being there at night, watching cars come into the hairpin, you know, going close to 200 miles an hour, slamming on the brakes, you know, break this lighting up glowing red coming into the hairpin turn. But uh, man, that was such a fun shoot. Shooting at super slow shutter speeds, dragging the shutter as they're coming in. Yeah. I'd much rather be doing that than sitting in a dark alley somewhere photographing a car. If you were gonna give someone a tip, uh, you know, a couple of tips on how to take a photo of their car, what would you tell them? Hmm, that's a good question. Hire a professional. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanna do it yourself, um, I'd say the number one mistake I see is people photographing their car in distractions in the background. You know, just, I call it just garbage. You know, a chain link fence in the background or a trash can leaned up against the wall in the background. You know, it's, it's stuff that distracts my eye. I like things that are clean, zero distraction. So take the time to park the car in a spot that's already aesthetically pleasing before you park the car there. And I think that'll step it up a whole lot. We can see that, you know, you drive a lot of very high-end cars. I do, yeah. Are there any of these cars that have surprised you in any way in that they were more drivable than you thought or they were not as much fun as you expected or just mm. any way? You know, I'm the average person who has never driven, uh, you know, a 458 Ferrari or a Lamborghini or, sure. you know, a Bentley, any any of these cars. Yeah. They think, well, that must be the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Or, tell me about one of these cars that maybe surprised you in some way. I've got a list of cars that surprised me, really, really surprised me. You know, it starts with the Acura NSX, the new one. I did not expect to like that car. I didn't really like the way it looked initially, but after like it just, it photographed really, really well and then it drove incredibly well. Very, very cool car. Um, it's heavy, but I liked it a lot. I was super, super surprised with that. The AMG GT, GTR. Nice yeah. car. Oh man. I yeah. did not expect to like that. We had a, uh, we had a green one here, bright green. And whew, whew, man, AMG needs to teach Ferrari and everybody else how to make a twin turbo V8 sound incredible. Cause man, 
Uh, other one, uh, Dodge Hellcat, Challenger Hellcat. Did not expect to like that car. Why, why didn't you expect to like it? I just don't like big, heavy, lumbering beast cars, you know? And that's exactly what it, that's it's what it exactly is. what it is, but it's, it's just a smile machine. You yeah. know, you can't, I mean, you just hit the throttle and just blah, you know, that noise that that thing makes, it just makes you smile, you just can't help it. I, I really, really like that car. Those are the ones that stand out, that really just caught me off guard. You know, you can drive a, a Ferrari 458 Speciale and you know you're gonna like it, because that's probably the best car. I, actually, I'm gonna scratch one off of that list. I'm gonna scratch the R8 off the list. 458 Speciale. That definitely needs to go on the list. Of all these cars here that you've driven, which one stands out as being the ultimate? Ferrari F12. There's nothing that's gonna sound as good as a Ferrari V12. I can't say that I can't say that that's a bad choice. Yeah. Well, it's been really cool hanging out with you today. The the, the photo shoot, watching you work, it's uh it's hectic, it's fast paced. It's very, very You're hard. doing a lot of work out there, you know, people fast. don't realize how yeah. hot, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, changing cameras, changing lights, changing lenses, yep. uh, moving the car around, positioning the wheels so that they're in the right place when you take the photo all that work that goes into it. But the work that you're doing is amazing. Thank you. Um, we, we appreciate the photos. I'll tell you what, I work my tail off, but uh, I love what I do. And it doesn't seem like work. I mean, it seems like I'm just out here having fun, you know, and that's what I love about it. I mean, what more could you ask for? Is there something you'd like to plug? My website is joshvonphotography.com. My Instagram is josh underscore von underscore photography. Uh, Facebook, Josh Von Photo. And my YouTube is, I think it's just Josh Von Photography. Well, we'll make sure we link to all those, you know, when we post the video. That's so everybody look for those links in the description and uh, go out and take a look because you're, you're going to really appreciate these photos. They're, they're incredible. Thank you.